Hey folks, this is Vint with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Across the Obelisk. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 18 bucks. Now, I stress Early Access. That means everything that you're about to see here, including this review, is subject to change. So I know what you're thinking. Oh great, it's another one of those deck-building roguelikes, another Slay of the Spire wannabe. Well, that's not the case at all. This game does enough different things and has enough content to stand on its own, which is really nice to see. Um, there are some straight-out copy-paste games similar to Slay the Spire, and I don't really care for them. But I do praise the ones that um, dare to dream, so to speak. So, what is this game all about? Well, you're going to assemble a party of up to four party members. And what's cool about this is that you can even play multiplayer with friends if you want to. So it supports up to a total of four players, including yourself. So you can control one party member, and if you have three other friends with you, they will each control their own party member. So, I mean, if you're playing single player, you can control all four, but if you want a co-op experience, it is there. That's really cool. That's something that I typically don't see in a deck-building roguelike, and that's something I'm really hoping to see more of in the future, you know, from other developers. So, this game at the moment has, I think, 10 different characters that you can play. Um, you unlock four of them. There's like a wolf, which is like your frontline tank fighter. Then you've got this uh, healer in the back, you've got this mage lady, and you've got this ranger. And they all do what you would expect them to do. But as you continue playing this game, you're going to unlock even more characters. Now, the game boasts up to 16 different people that you can unlock. But at this point in time, um, whenever you're going to your party selection screen, um, only 10 are available and only 4 are initially available. So you gonna, you kind of have to unlock up to 10 and then wait for development to continue in order to unlock those other 6 um, there are four warriors, four scouts as they're called, four mages, and four healers. And again, you start with one of each. And what's cool is that each one has their own action point system. So whenever it's the fighter's turn, for example, he might have five action points available to him. He's going to have a hand of his own cards, and you're going to play them and spend these action points in order to, you know, use these cards and their abilities. And then when they're done, or when you're done, you end your turn, and then the next person in line goes. There's a timetable up on the very top, similar to that of, say, a turn-based uh, strategy warlike game where, you know, each each person has initiative. If you've ever played, like, a, a D&D-style turn-based game, then you'll be familiar with, okay, this guy has the highest speed, so he's first on the timeline. Okay, now this next person's up next. So you kind of have to plan ahead and see who's going when. But anyway... Um, back to my original point, you know, characters will go in turn, and then let's say it's your ranger's turn next, he's got his own action point pool, and what's cool is that action points do carry over from turn to turn, so if you don't use all, say, your four or five action points that your ranger has, or scout, or whatever he's called, then, you know, you can save some of those for the next turn, um, but you do have a cap, so you just can't keep saving them, and saving them, and saving them, and then unleash, like, you know, a boatload of heck, you know, on a future turn. It doesn't work that way. Um, there is permanent progression in this game in the form of leveling up these heroes. Um, as you finish your runs in this game, you'll earn these experience points for each of these characters. And when they reach the next rank, you can put a point, they're like talent points, and you can put points into different things like increase this person's health or increase the number of armor charges that you get whenever you play a card that gives you armor charges or what have you. So you can spend these talent points and there's a bunch of different trees that you will eventually unlock, which is really cool. I hesitate to use the word tree. They're more like columns. Tier one column includes these things. Pick one. Tier two column includes these things okay good assign a point here and so on so there's permanent progression that way there's also a town that you start in at the beginning of every run and assuming that you've got these crates that you earn you can apply permanent bonuses to the town and that will carry with you from run to run to run so Ideally, you know, the more you play, the stronger your heroes get and the stronger this town gets. And this town, these town upgrades will give you different things. 
like, you know, the cost of this is reduced or, you know, what have you. So you can um, upgrade a variety of different ways. And I'm kind of glad because this game as it stands is incredibly difficult. Um, I still can't get past the first act. Um, that's the first map that you're assigned to. Like the first boss. I lost on the first boss. And I'm having a heck of a time trying to beat him with what I've got right now. So um, there's also a level of RNG to the events in this game. Typically, you're either going to fight monsters or there's events. And these events are like a choose-your-own-adventure. Okay, what are you going to do? Uh, this, this, or this. Um, and if you choose this, um, instead of it rolling dice like you would in D&D, &D, um, you're going to draw cards. And the action points cost of that card will determine a pass or fail. So, like, the event might say, okay, um, your party needs to draw less than a total of six um, points or whatever. So, okay, the, the warrior draws a card, it's a one. Then the, the scout draws one, it's a one. The mage drew one, it's a two. Uh-oh, uh, they're up to four. If we drew, if, if the mage, or the, uh, the cleric, rather, the healer, draws a two, then we fail the event. You know what I mean? So, there's those RNG-style events that will pop up. Um, you can kind of guess how well you're going to do based on how you've been seeding your deck thus far. After every battle, you'll be able to um, just pick cards for each of your decks. So the warrior can pick this card out of the three or this card out of the three and so on. You can even unlock more cards and unlocking more cards will give you more options in the future. So that's kind of cool. Um, you do earn currency in this game. There's like gold and these blue crystals and you'll be spending both to... Um, you know, build your deck or, you know, upgrade cards, remove cards, and all that jazz. So it's it's a typical deck-building roguelike, but again, the whole cooperative element, the party of four, the action point system, the, uh, the turn order, track, you know, these are things that are not typical of a deck-building roguelike. And I do like the fact that there's a high replayability here. So I think this is totally worth the purchase as it stands. Um, again, my only real complaint with the game is that it's too difficult for me to play right now, but I'm assuming that after like 15 runs, I'm hoping I would have earned enough talent points to, you know, make it past the first boss. But if you don't mind a bit of a challenge, then, um, and, and you're looking for a deck building roguelike, but slightly different than what you've seen, then um, I would highly suggest taking a look at this one. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.